something you ought to know about Dylan. There's something you ought to know about Madison and Rosie. There's something you ought to know about Micro. I like to make videos and I like to travel around the world. I like to do some animation and I like art. I do acting, video games, reading. I like surfing, I like pop culture, I like good music, and I am autistic. I have autism. I'm autistic. And we, and we are, are autistic. autistic. Autism affects all types of people, and for some, can make things like social interactions and communication difficult, but not impossible. And not knowing how to communicate can make emergency situations especially challenging. Someone like me might have trouble asking for help. Or recognizing a safety risk. This video will teach you everything you ought to know when it comes to identifying, communicating with, and assisting our friends and neighbors with autism. In both emergency and non-emergency situations. To create a safer, more inclusive community. Every autistic person is different but there are still a number of ways to identify someone who is on the spectrum. Listening is a biggie. If you're talking with someone and they seem to have trouble understanding you, don't respond to you, or have unusual speech patterns, they might be autistic. An autistic person may repeat phrases, or echo what you say, or quote lines from movies or TV. An autistic person may speak with an unusual volume level, or say something awkward. Some autistic people communicate using a program on an iPad or other device, picture cards, sign language, or in other ways. Visual cues can help identify someone with autism. Watch for repetitive motion, like flapping hands or walking back and forth. This behavior is called stimming. Stimming calms us while regulating our nervous system. All people stim to some extent. Maybe you tap your feet or bite your nails. Watch for strange social interaction. If a person is acting in an odd manner, like staring at something or taking a long time to respond, you ought to take a minute before assuming they need help or are in danger. Crowded spaces can make me feel uncomfortable. Sometimes when I'm so uncomfortable, I don't like to be touched on the shoulders or back. Respect the space they seek in a busy room or chaotic social situation. By watching and listening and interacting with patients, we can determine whether someone with autism needs assistance or might prefer to be left alone. So you've noticed that someone may be autistic, but you're unsure if they need assistance. When do you offer help? You ought to help if the person is in a dangerous situation and isn't responding effectively. You want to help if the person is wandering and seems lost or confused. Like if there's a fire and they are not leaving the building. How do you help? How do you help? How do you help? Getting an autistic person's attention might take a little time. Try to connect by guessing something they are interested in. Look at their clothing or objects they're carrying for clues, like headphones. Because I like listening to music. I like music and the Jonas Brothers. Avoid touching an autistic person unless you need to in order to keep them safe. Ask before you put anything on their body or clothing, just like you would with anyone. If the individual is lost, overwhelmed, or needs support from someone they know, you could help them make a phone call. Ask, do you want to call someone? If the situation becomes serious and you choose to call 911, it's important to tell the operator that you believe this person may be autistic. Sometimes autistic people are less aware of their body in space. So they might stand too close to you or bump you as they walk by. An autistic person may not want to be touched or may not want to have things like a sticker or wristband put on them. When you talk to an autistic person, be calm and keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You might ask, do you need help? Or are you hurt? Use words with clear meanings. No sarcasm or figures of speech. If a conversation is ineffective, try writing down your message or drawing a picture. Use gestures or show what you mean by doing it yourself. Be patient when asking someone with autism to do something. 
Ask once, then allow for triple the response time. One. Two. Three. This gives them extra processing time to answer your question. They see and feel the world in a way that is different from how you do. Be tolerant and respectful of who they are and what they are experiencing. It might be different from how you experience things, but it's equally as valid. We all have to be advocates for autistic people in our communities. If you notice people reacting to an autistic person with fear and misunderstanding, do your best to share the things you've learned about the autistic community. And I ought to know, because I have autism. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Oh wait, one last thing you ought to know. Learn more about police autism community training at pactautism.com. Thanks. <laughs> yeah.